All right, good morning, folks. In this video, what I want to do is walk you through percent error, well, actually, first density and then percent error. Let's fix that real quick. Does that work? And it did. Awesome. So we are starting Unit 2 by looking at some properties of matter. Uh, by now in Unit 2, you should have learned a little bit about our different types of matter, a gas, liquid, solid, learned a little bit about their phases, as well as properties and changes. And we're going to talk again just a little bit about density. So what density is, if we had to just kind of come up with a very loose definition, it's basically how tight together atoms or molecules are packed in an object. And you can kind of see my goals for you today, but let's go ahead and do this. So density on page two. Uh, our formula for density is mass over volume. And again, what we're kind of measuring is how much mass we have in a specific volume. Where mass is how much we have, units are typically going to be grams, maybe kilograms as well. And volume is how much space it takes up. And with our units for volume, we typically have things like milliliters or cubic centimeters. And our units for density, uh, if we're talking liquid, it's typically going to be grams per milliliter. Or if it is a solid, it might be grams per cubic centimeter. And these units can change uh, depending on what you're using. The key thing is that we recognize is that we have units of um, mass over volume. So we might even have something like kilograms over liters in some cases. Well, let's talk about this. So on page two you have this little triangle and again I would fill this in on page two in your notes and what this is is just a little I want to say it's not it's like a mnemonic device but it's a visual aid for helping us to solve density problems. All you have to do is, if you are asked to solve for any of those three components, density, mass, or volume, you just cover the one you're solving for, and then it shows you what math you need to do. So for instance, if you cover density, so if we're trying to find density, we'd cover it up, and we're left with mass over volume. So we go mass divided by volume. Guess what? If we're trying to find the mass, we cover the M, and it would just be density times volume. Or if we're trying to find volume in the problem, oh look, mass divided by density. So again, just a little way to help you solve. And, and we'll try a couple. And again, cover up the unit or what we're trying to find. And the two units remaining will show us how to solve it. So let's try. And what I have on here is just some ways we might in a lab find density. Uh, again, kind of hard for us to do with remote learning this year. Uh, so we'll come back to this. We'll do a little interactive lab on Thursday that will show you this. Again, same thing. Not really too worried about this right here. And let's try this. So number one asks, what is the density of cardboard if 6.2 grams occupies 8.56 cubic centimeters? So again, what I would do, we're trying to find density. So if we cover up density... We cover it up, mass over volume. So again, this is where knowing units is important. If we're asked to find density, you know density is mass over volume. So if we pay attention to our units, oh, we know grams is mass. That's why I started that early in the video. Divided by our volume of 8.56 cubic centimeters, which would be cm cubed. So obviously just 6.2 divided by 8.56. And if I had to pay attention to significant figures, there should be two of them. So 0.72, and then we can't forget the units. Units would be grams per cubic centimeter. Again, our units are always the mass unit over the volume unit. And I know that was kind of done a little bit quickly, but again, we want to find density. 
So we covered D for density, and we know mass divided by volume gives us that answer. So it's just remembering, oh, grams is our mass, cubic centimeters is our volume. Would you like to try a couple more? Well, let's do two more real quick. So number two asks, what is the density of a gold nugget having a volume of 2.39 cubic centimeters and a mass of 45.58 grams? Maybe try that on your own, see what you can do. And then number four is asking, um, actually, maybe let's do number two real quick. Changing my plans. So let's do our little visual aid up here. Density, mass, volume. So number two, we're asked to find density. So we know, oh, density is mass over volume. So it tells us 45.58 grams is our mass over 2.39 cubic centimeters, cm cubed, that is our volume. So 45.58 divided by 2.39, and with significant figures, 19.1, and then units, grams per cubic centimeter. And then number four, cerium sulfate has a density of 3.17 grams per cubic centimeter. What is the volume of 0.54 grams? So we're looking for volume. So notice now if we cover the volume, and actually you know what I'll do here, is this one's a little bit different than the other two. Again, we cover up the volume. Oh look, mass over density. So we know to find volume, it's gonna be our mass divided by our density. So mass, uh, grams per cubic centimeter, that's our density. Nope, that goes on the bottom. Mass is 0.54 grams. So 0.54 divided by 3.17. And with sig figs, it should be 0.17. And then our units here. Well, let's look at our density for our volume units. It's going to be cubic centimeters. It's going to be cm cubed. So our volume would be 0.17 cubic centimeters. So really, that's kind of density. Again, to me, the tricky thing is just remembering units. You know, if you draw your little triangle, you can easily figure out how to rearrange density to solve for any of those three. And then just watching the units, so you know mass is grams, volume is cubic centimeters or milliliters, uh, and then our density unit is the grams per cubic centimeter or grams per cubic milliliter. Okay, um, I'm moving on. We're gonna go to percent error on page three. And percent error, is a way for us to uh, basically measure, quantitatively measure with numbers, how close we are to our actual value. So this is our formula. Yours is a little bit different. Um, I think it's kind of important to see the different terms here. But our percent error is defined as the absolute value, so it's always positive, that's kind of missing, of our experimental value and our experimental value, that's the one that you find. That's the one you get by doing in the lab. Minus the accepted. And we also call the accepted our theoretical or actual or the true value. So again, we subtract them first. Then we divide by that accepted or the theoretical or the true value. And then we multiply by 100. So again, percent error. We subtract our value, the experimental value, minus the accepted or the true value, divide it by the true value, make sure it's positive, again, absolute value bars around it, and then multiply by 100. So we'll try one real quick. Oh, I totally forgot that it was on this slide. So let's take a look at number one on page three. 
So number one on page three. We measure the density of the substance in the lab as, as 4.25 grams per milliliter. The true value is 4.32. Calculate percent error. Okay, so we know our percent error, absolute value of R experimental minus the true value divided by the true value times 100. So 4.25, again we subtract first, then we divide by the true value, and again we gotta make sure it's a positive number, and then times 100. And what I like to do with percent error is I like just to leave it with two decimal points. I normally don't worry too much about significant figures on this. And we would have a percent error of 1.62%. So that tells us that our experimental value is pretty close to our actual value. Again, the lower that percent error, the closer we are. And again, it's, it's that straightforward. Good luck with the rest of page three.